I seen a video that said five things that I learned when I started programming. And I'm gonna do it better. I'm gonna do six. Not only am I gonna do six, I'm gonna just spitball this shit. All right, I'm not, I'm not, I don't even know what I'm gonna say at this point. I don't know what the five, I don't know what the six are. But I'm gonna tell you in this video, we're gonna see how it goes. I'm just, I'm just gonna make it up as I go. That's it. That's how you gotta go through life. Making it up as you go. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna tell you six things that I wish I would've known before I started programming. Guys, if you ever just joined me for the first time, I'm John from simpleprogrammer.com on this channel. I teach you how to become a highly paid, highly skilled, highly spontaneous software developer. <laughs> No, seriously, uh, if you want to learn soft skills, if you want to become more dynamic as a programmer, to become a better communicator, to make more money, learn how to negotiate, learn all the important stuff that doesn't involve coding that you need to know as a programmer, you are in the right place to click the subscribe button, click the bell. So get notifications because when the videos drop, you don't want to miss them. And uh, also, uh, I've got a book that you're going to be interested in. It's called The Complete Software Developer Career Guide. It's actually the number one best-selling uh, software development book on Amazon right now in the software development category. Okay, I know that Cracking the Coding Interview is higher up, Okay, but it's not a software development book. It's in a different category. So I'm number one in that category. Uh, go ahead and, and grab that book. There's a link up in the cards in the description below. All right, here's the very first one that I wish I would have known before I became a programmer is that most programming work is maintenance, maintaining code. I thought I was going to be creating new shit. I thought I was going to make new apps and all this stuff. And what it turns out is that most of your job is going to be maintaining existing code bases right? Fixing bugs, uh, doing that, that kind of thing, adding some features to an existing code base, not creating a new feature or new code base and, and not creating a new application. It's going to be old code that you're going to be working in. All right. Uh, you know, this was kind of a disappointment to me because a lot of my jobs I was expecting to like, you know, and, and when I was learning to code, I was creating new things. I wasn't really thinking that most of my job would be maintaining things. Now, this isn't always the case. You could be working for a brand new flashy startup and creating the first version of software. But the, the truth is that there's more existing software out there than there is new software. Therefore, most likely you'll be working on existing software. And even if you work for a company that's creating new existing software or new software, you're probably going to have to maintain a legacy system, some support, something like that. So that's number one. Okay. That's, that's number one. I wish I would have known that because then I would have prepared, I would have had my expectations set a little bit better and I would have prepared a little bit better for what I was actually going to do in, in my job. Okay. The second one. Okay is that readable code is more important than efficient code. This is not something that you really learn in school. Okay. This is not because I remember my Java class, my first Java 101 class. In that class, I remember like writing really tight loop iterations, right? And making it super efficient and, you know, writing all of this, you know, all of this code that was like super efficient going through and, and creating sorting algorithms and all that stuff is good and, and, and fine and dandy and stuff like that. But in reality, okay, as a software developer, writing good, clean, readable code is way, way more important than writing efficient, fast code. Now, there are some places where you optimize, but we want to avoid premature optimization, right? You want a really good book on writing good, clean code. It's clean code by Bob Martin. Okay. Bob Martin, awesome guy, friend of mine, just a, a stellar guy. Okay. You know, check, check out his book, clean code. Uh, he's got, actually, he's got a, um, a video, uh, course you can subscribe to, or you can buy like episodes. It's called clean coders. He's, he's hilarious, dude. Like he, he dresses up as star Trek uniforms and all kinds of stuff. He's just, just a, a fun guy, fun learning experience. If you want to learn and he's, you know, he's the master of, of clean code. And, uh, yeah, so, so check that out. We'll, we'll put a link maybe, but, um, tell him I sent you. All right. There's no affiliate here. I'm just doing this because he's an awesome guy. All right. So, so yeah, so we talked about that then is, um, I don't know why my nose itches today, but, uh, so, okay, next, let's see. I think, I think I would say that how important communication skills were. Okay. Because when I first started out, I thought it was all about, you know, the meritocracy of, of how good you can code and it's important to be good right? To be a good developer. But the people who get promoted and who get the best jobs are the communicators. If you can communicate well your ideas, 
that makes a bigger difference than anything else. And as I learned that skill, that's where I really started to get promoted. That's where I got put into like technical, like architect and leadership positions and mentor positions and team lead positions because I was the guy that could communicate. I could go to the product owner and I could say, okay, so you want this, you under, okay, and, and understand this. And I could explain it to the developers and I could translate back and forth and I could communicate my ideas to my team members, right? Once I learned to do that, it became a lot easier to work with people, right? Because most of the time, people are going to choose the thing that they understand. If you can clearly communicate and get people to understand you, then you're going to have a lot more success, right? A, a lot of developers, the problem that they have is that you can't understand them. You don't know what they're talking about. It's smart. They're very smart. But hey, you know, it, it, it takes more than just being smart. So that's three. We've got three more to go here. All right. So what else do I wish I knew? I wish I knew how important the computer science algorithms are. It seems really weird because you're like, ah, oh, well, we don't really use that stuff, right? You know, you're like, ah, oh, I don't really use like, and I just talked about it before, like loop iterations and, uh, you know, efficient sorting methods, but it's not that. It's more like collections and containers and lists and the algorithms around that, like computer science, the kind of algorithms that, you know, if you, if you study like leak code or algo experts, uh, in fact, I think I've got a, a good affiliate link for algo experts because they, they've got a really good course on on that. Also, Interview Cake is, is another one, right? You can check that out as well. So check out either one of those, honestly. And, and I think you'll, you'll find a benefit if you want to learn that. But I didn't realize how important that would be like to learn the algorithms uh, because I didn't realize that I would use it in day-to-day programming because once I actually started studying this stuff and actually learned it and actually took some courses in algorithms and started self-studying algorithms, all of a sudden I found places where I could apply it, right? And it made me much better as a programmer, right? I was so efficient. I was doing Top Coder actually is, is where I got into this. And uh, Top Coder is like a coding competition. They still have it. And I was really highly ranked in, in Top Coder. But at first I sucked balls, okay? But I had to like compete with these guys and I was really competitive. And I was looking at their code and then I was learning, you know, I was doing C++ at the time and I was learning all about standard template language or library, right? STL stuff. I became really good at that. I became really good at using collections and containers and advanced algorithms on those collections and containers and all that stuff. And man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like that, that really helped me in my career because the thing is, I didn't see the opportunities. It didn't seem like that, you know, max min type of algorithms and, uh, you know, and all these things would apply, but they did apply, right? In, in a lot of ca- categories or places where I was writing code. Okay. So, uh, so learning that stuff was really important. Okay. So we're on number, number five here. What do I wish I would have known before I became a programmer? I wish I would have known that putting in all the extra hours and time didn't actually translate to much. It just robbed me of my life, right? Because when I started out as a programmer, I just wanted to code and I just wanted to put in as much hours as possible. I wanted to climb the ladder by putting in as many hours. And so I'd work like 60 hour weeks every week uh, for my employer. And you know what? I didn't get paid any more money. Maybe I got a little bit more advancement, but not much. And I just wasted like 20 hours of my life every week, right? So it wasn't worth it, right? I could have accomplished what I needed to get done in 40 hours and and spent the rest of the time building my own business. And eventually I figured that out and I started doing it. I started limiting. I was like, I started taking jobs and saying, Hey, look, I'm only working 40 hours. That's it. I'll, you're going to get really good work for me. Like my work is going to be as good as someone who works an 80 hour week or better, but I'm only working 40. Okay. Because I have my own shit that I need to do and I want to start my own business and, and work on my own stuff. And so, you know, this is it. This is my negotiation for, and you know, some people, some jobs didn't like that, but most, most of the time, you know, it was fine because I I'm coming in with some quality there. So I think that's, that's really important to understand is that you need to, you know, so many programmers that that's what they love to do. They get obsessed with it. And they, it ends up costing them because when you're doing all this work for someone else, you're not building your own empire. You're not building your, yourself, right? You don't have time to go to the gym. You don't have time to, uh, to have a, a love life if you want to have that, right? You don't have time to work on yourself, build your business and finances, all that stuff. So that's, uh, I think that's really important. And then let's see, uh, what else, what else we got here? One last one. This, this should be a good one. What, uh, what else? Did I... Oh, here, here, I got it. I got it. I wish I knew that I didn't have to be a nerd to be a programmer, that I could be whatever I wanted to, okay? That I could be a man 
to be a programmer. I didn't have to be like, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a squinty, you know, dork glasses type of guy. Right. It doesn't matter if you have, I have glasses, I've got contacts in, but what I'm saying is that I didn't realize that I didn't have that. I didn't have to fit the stereotypical mold. There's like a stere- stereotype, right. Of a programmer, of a nerd. Okay. I didn't realize I didn't have to be that. Right. I, I kind of was falling into that category, into that mold. I've got pictures and stuff you could see of, of me in that phase. I didn't realize I could, I could have done something else. I could have been something else in, until, you know, once I started uh, my career and then I started lifting weights and I started to get in shape and started to do other things. And then, you know, and then I became the person I am now. But, um, but I, I thought I had to fit into that kind of shy introverted mold because that's what you're supposed to do, right? We, we are very, very attached to our identities. So whatever identities we form in life, you know, we tend to act out those identities. So that's it. Those are six things that I wish I would have known. What do you wish you would have known before you started your programming career? Okay. I want to hear, let me know, leave a comment below. And then if you haven't already, what I would highly suggest that you check out is my course on how to market yourself as a software developer. That course will teach you how to build a blog, how to build a brand and to become a programmer who could potentially make a lot of money uh, off of your brand, right? I, that's what I did. I learned how to do that. That's why you're watching these videos. Okay. And that's some other videos. And, you know, I, I think it's a highly, highly valuable for what, what I'm trying to like 300 bucks for the course. It's, it's, Easily, you're going to get multiple returns on that. Uh, then, you know, I should, I should really raise the price because it's, uh, it, now that I think about it, it's like, if, if you just implement that and you just get a raise, uh, it's going to way more than pay for the course, like 10x more than the course. So anyway, check that out if you, if you haven't and leave me a comment. Let me know what is it that you wish you would have learned before you became a programmer? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Is there something major that I left out? I don't know. This is, this is mine. Like I said, I just, just made this up because that's how I am.